Okay. Um, why am I a Reformed Baptist? Well, I think um, it's the most consistent with um, understanding the uh, scriptures. Um, all of us have uh, traditions and misunderstandings, and as we study the Bible over the years, we have to um, uh, challenge what we believe and see if it's really what the Bible teaches. Um, that's how we grow in our understanding of God's Word. But, uh, yeah, I am a Reformed Baptist. Um, I believe uh, clearly the Bible teaches that um, baptism uh, comes after the person um, is a, you know, after the person believes they should be baptized. Um, sorry, I mean, I I love my pre my Presbyterian brothers and sisters. Love you guys, awesome people. Um, but yeah, um, Acts two forty one says then those who had received his word were baptized, and that day there were added about three thousand souls. And I know that some people um, who believe in infant baptism, they talk about the the Philippian jailer, him and his whole household. But but I mean, it didn't. It doesn't really say there were infants, babies. Um, there's other arguments. Uh, I I intend for this to not be a super in depth video. <clears throat> um, I'm not a dispensationalist. Um, I think you know you know. It's a perversion of the scriptures. It's it's a modern invention and not a dispensationalist. I am a five-point Calvinist. Um, I believe in Reformed theology because I believe the Bible is very clear on that. And no, Calvin <clears throat> did not invent Calvinism. Uh, we could trace it back way, 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 way before John Calvin was born. You find uh, many quotations from early church fathers um, way, way before John Calvin was born. But um, anyway, uh, yeah, I believe that Reformed theology is clearly what the Bible teaches. Um, some people misunderstand 2 Peter 3.9 about God not willing any to perish, um, I dealt with a lot of misunderstandings, with some misunderstandings of Reformed theology in uh, other videos of mine, like We're Not All God's Children. I would recommend you there, but um, in 2 Peter 3.9, if uh, you know, understood correctly, uh, 2 Peter 1.1 1, 1 says, To those who have received a faith of the same kind as ours. Okay, So the patience toward you, towards you, in context, is referring to God's elect, not the people of Jude 4, where it says they were um, long beforehand marked out for condemnation, not the people uh, of John 17, 9. Jesus expressed um, he was not praying for the world. In that context, he was referring to the non-elect. Um, remember Amos? 3, 2, chapter 3, verse 2, uh, there was a time where God passed over the majority of his creation. God said to the Jews, of all the nations of the earth, I have only known you. Okay, um, Psalm 147, verses 19 to 20, he declares his words to Jacob, his statutes and his ordinances to Israel. He has not dealt thus with any nation. And as for his ordinances, they have not known them. There are some people who are um, appointed to eternal life, Acts 13, 48, and others who are appointed to doom, uh, 1 um, Peter 2, 8. Um, God isn't trying to save those who he knows will be lost. Um, Jesus said, no one will come to me unless the Father who's, who, unless the Father draws them. But not everybody gets drawn. I mean, that's just uh, clear. Um, in John six thirty seven, Jesus said, um, 
all that the Father gives to me will come to me. And he who comes to me, I will certainly not cast out. Ephesians chapter 1, verses 4 to, 4 to 5. Just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we would be holy and blameless before him in love, he predestined us to adoption as sons through Jesus Christ to whom to, to, to himself according to the kind intention of his will. So God planned out um, all of our days before we were even born. The Bible says in Psalm 139 verse 16, In your book were written every one of them, the days that were formed for me, when as yet there were none of them. And at Job 14.5, it says, His days are determined. The number of his months, his months is with you, and his limits you have set so that he cannot pass. Um, man is bound by the will of God. Um, Proverbs 21.1, The king's heart is like channels of water in the hand of the Lord. He turns it wherever he wishes, and not just the king. Psalm 13, I'm, I'm sorry, 33, 15 says that God fashions the hearts of them all. Jeremiah 10, 23 says, I know, O Lord, that the way of man is not in himself, for it is not in man that walks to direct his steps. Uh, Proverbs 16, 33 says the lot is cast into the lap, but it's every decision is from the Lord. Um, look at Ephesians. Um, 111, we have obtained an, an inheritance having been predestined according to his purpose who works all things after the counsel of his will. Now, there are so many misunderstandings about Reformed theology, like uh, God making robots. No, God doesn't make robots. He create he he turns people who hate him. He turns God haters into God lovers. Um, he changes the heart. He does a supernatural work. Um, because left to ourselves, it says the natural man uh, doesn't understand the things of God. We're hostile towards towards God's word, and unless um, God, um, like in Acts um, with Lydia, it says the Lord opened her heart to uh, hear the things that were spoken by Paul, which was the gospel. So unless God does that, the person you know draws them. Uh, the person will remain in their God-hating state. Um, you know, that's just the way it is. Um, so God doesn't make robots. He changes hearts. Uh, what about, there's another, uh, so many misunderstandings. Um, when people say, uh, what about if someone, okay, this predestination stuff, what happens if there's someone who they want to be saved, but they're not going to be because they weren't predestined. That's not going to happen at all, under, understanding the Bible correctly, because um, anyone who uh, loves God, they, they they do so because they were drawn. They had a heart-changing experience. They were regenerated. So, you know, like I said, left to ourselves, we are, we are all God-haters. We... Um, we don't want um, to be obedient to uh, God's word. Romans 1, uh, naturally we want to suppress the truth um, because of our love for our own sin, all of us. So, you know, because of the fall, the sin nature, <clears throat> because of Adam and Eve, and so on. So, this is not a uh, God is trying to save everyone type of uh, Arminian uh, theology. <clears throat> Look what uh, Jesus said in Matthew eleven twenty five to 27. He said, I praise you, Father, 
Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and intelligent and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for this was well-pleasing in your sight. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, nor does anyone know the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son wills to reveal him. I forgot to mention, um, Reformed Baptists, our Confession of Faith is the 1689 London Baptist um, Confession of Faith, because I mentioned in the beginning of this, <clears throat> doctrinally I'm a Reformed Baptist. Um, some of my favorite books on Reformed theology, um, I guess my number one favorite would be The Reformed Doctrine of Predestination by Lorraine Botner. Um, fantastic. There's classics, and that's a classic. Another classic is um, The Sovereignty of God by A.W. Pink. Um, there's also uh, The Potter's Freedom by Dr. James White. Fantastic book. Uh, I, just heard, I heard numerous times that this church has, um, this book has, um, churches have sprung up because of this book. Um, but let's go to, um, to get a little bit of a, you know, better picture of uh, what I have been talking about. Let's go to uh, Romans 9, 11 to 23. <clears throat> it says, for though, the, for though the twins were not yet born and had not done anything good or bad so that the so that God's purpose according to his choice would stand not because of works but because of him who calls it was said to her the older will serve the younger just as it is written Jacob I loved but Esau I hated that's what God said God said Esau I hated um, what shall we say then there is no injustice with God, is there? May it never be. For he says to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I have compassion. So then it does not depend on the man who wills or the man who runs, but on God who has mercy. For the scripture says to Pharaoh, for this very purpose I raised you up. Think about that. For this very purpose, I raised you up to demonstrate my power in you and that my name might be proclaimed throughout the whole earth. So then he has mercy on whom he desires and he hardens who he desires. And I can't help but think about Exodus chapter 10 verses 1 to 2. Um, then the Lord said to Moses, go to Pharaoh, for I have hardened his heart and the heart of his servants, that I may perform these signs of mine among them, and that you may tell in the hearing of your son, of your grandson, how I made a mockery of the Egyptians and how I performed my signs among them, that you may know that I am the Lord. Um, so going back to Romans nine now the inspired writer answers the objector you will say to me then why does he still find fault for who resists his will now if if free will was a reality that wouldn't be necessary to say that honestly you will say to me then, who, uh, why does he still find fault for who resists his will? On the contrary, who are you, O oh man, who answers back to God? The thing molded will not say to the molder, why did you make me like this, will it? Or does not the potter have a right over the clay to make from the same lump one vessel for honorable use and another for common use? What if God, although willing to demonstrate his wrath and to make his power known, 
endured with much patience vessels of wrath prepared for destruction, and he did so to make known the riches of his glory upon vessels of mercy, which he prepared beforehand for glory. Um, so this is just um, not going super in-depth. Um, there's people who object to this and bring up John 3.16, for God so loved the world. Um, it's Whosoever is not in the Greek, it's all the believing ones will not perish. Um, it says that God purchased people from every tribe, tongue, and nation. He didn't purchase every uh, one from all those nations for salvation. Obviously, there are some, like I said before, who are long beforehand marked out for condemnation, Jude 4. Um, there's a number of other verses in the Old Testament about God hardening people's hearts and bringing judgment, and he justfully can do that. God does not owe anyone anything except for his wrath. He, God does not owe anyone anything except for his wrath because of our sin. So if he has, if he pours out his wrath on us, he's only giving us what we deserve. If he has mercy on any of us, then he's giving us what we do not deserve. So that's not a really super in-depth uh, thing. I recommended those books. Um, in Wayne Grudem's Systematic Theology, he has a chapter, I think it's 16, on God's providence. Um, I don't agree with everything on Grudem, but um, that is uh, a really great chapter. Um, and uh, it took me a while to, uh, to get this. I was brought up in the apostate Roman Catholic Church, and um, and so when I first got born again, it was through a Pentecostal uh, church that was within walking distance from where I lived because I didn't have a car at the time, and uh, through God um, revealing to me through His His Word his written word and um, helping me to understand, um, I became, um, I'm a Reformed Baptist. I think that it is um, being the most consistent, uh, the most accurate with understanding the scriptures. And um, Reformed Baptist churches, they tend to, you're not going to always remain on a baby level. If, if you want to remain on a baby level of the Bible your whole life, then don't go to a Reformed Baptist church. Um, if you want to grow and get deeper and deeper and deeper, <clears throat> well, a Reformed Baptist church is where you want to be. Um, a lot of Reformed Baptist churches, they do expository preaching. They'll go through a whole entire book of the Bible and I mean, because they get deep, it'll it'll take a while. Um, there are <clears throat> outside of just the 1689 Reformed Baptist denomination. I'm not crazy about the SBC, the uh, Southern Baptist, but um, there are some Reformed. Uh, doctrinally Reformed Baptist pastors in the SBC, but you know that you have to call, and that's and you know you would have to call the individual churches and find that out. Um, a lot of times, I think the SBC is a mess. Uh, they're I'm not crazy about their uh, new leadership and uh, things like that, and so. Yeah, so I just wanted this to be a. I didn't want this to be a really. Um, a long video uh, or anything like that but yeah I just um, I would encourage you if you want to go to a church that um, you you won't remain a baby Christian forever you know you'll be around people who are into the study of doctrine and theology and that sort of thing well then a Reformed Baptist Church is uh, a great place for that uh, generally generally speaking. 
Um, so many churches that I see um, all over the place. Uh, I mean, you got your Southern Baptist, Pentecostal. I mean, so many churches that I see, um, they just keep people on a baby, lo baby level of the Bible uh, their whole life. And uh, the growth is not the, the in-depth is really not in-depth um, uh, teaching and not too many doctrinal studies. They don't really, you know, get too deep. So uh, it's unfortunate, but unfortunately, it seems like most churches are like that. Uh, they are. Um, so yeah, um, check out a uh, Reformed Baptist church if um, you're someone who actually wants to um, be a part of a part of a church where you get deeper and deeper. And you're not going to remain a little baby, baby Christian uh, for the rest of your life. If you, you want to um, really dig deep into the scriptures and have good uh, exegetical um, biblical teaching, um, then you might want to try a Reformed Baptist church.